For analysis, William Taylor joins me now, former ambassador to Ukraine under Presidents Bush and Obama. Mr. Ambassador, thanks. How much should we believe that Moscow may really be scaling back its plans to take all of Ukraine? Kelly, it's a great question. Uh, as you indicated, there's reason not to believe them. There's reason not to believe anything that the Russians say about this, uh, about this operation. However, uh, this is consistent with the, the differences between the Russian soldiers and the Ukrainian soldiers. The Russian so soldiers are not sure why they're there. They're, they, they haven't been told about what their mission is. They're just in, a, in a, what they thought was a friendly country. Whereas, Kelly, the Ukrainian soldiers are fighting for their country. They're fighting for their land. They know what they're there for. They know that how important it is for them. And that's showing up. That is, that's being demonstrated every day. So we do see these counterattacks. We do see the, the Ukrainians pushing back the Russians away from Kyiv. We see the civilians uh, down in Kherson that you just described that are, that are yelling at the Russian occupiers and pushing them back. So this is a demonstration, Kelly, of the grit, of the, of the purpose, and of the mission of the, of the Ukrainians. But why would Russia oh. allow for such an international humiliation? They may not have a choice of being humiliated. I mean, they made a Putin made a strategic error. He made a blunder when he decided to go in. There was there were a lot of indications, Kelly, that uh, this was coming. Um, his his uh, his 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 soldiers uh, were not ready. Um, he underestimated the Ukrainians, um, and and he was told early on about the the heavy sanctions, the hard sanctions that would come. Maybe he didn't believe it. But he now, you're right, he is facing the possibility of humiliation, and then he may sit down and negotiate. That's what we have to see. Or he may lash out with chemical weapons or worse. How big of a threat do you think that is? And what do you read into President Biden specifically making a point of going to Poland in addition to the NATO meetings on this trip? I think President Biden going to Poland is a strong signal. It's a strong signal to the Poles, obviously. It's a strong signal to the Ukrainians. Uh, they see the president of the United States right next door, right on their border. That's a that's a strong message, and it's a signal, as you just indicated, to the Russians. That is, if they're considering doing something that is just further illegal, further uh, in the in the area of war crimes, to use chemical weapons, uh, that is just a further indication of how low the Russians have sunk, um, and and how desperate they may be. They don't have enough people. They don't have troops. They don't have enough equipment. They may be running out of these bombs, the, the, the precision bombs. They've got big problems. And if they should reach, reach, reach out, lash out, uh, they are then going to have a response that President Biden... What about. should the international community offer if, they need, if Russia is looking for a way to save face and reach some kind of negotiated outcome? Kelly, I don't think it's the right question to ask what, how we can save his face. Uh, uh, President Putin has got himself into this problem. Um, he needs to get himself out. We're not going to bail him out. We're not going to save his face. What we're going to do is make him realize that he's lost, that he, that he made a big mistake. Now, that said, there may be some areas for negotiation. President Zelensky has offered to think about how his nation goes forward. President Zelensky wants security. He wants security, and, and he's looking for other ways to get that. And so there's, there's a negotiation to be had. Sure. And the negotiation would be a, a welcome development at this point. Ambassador, thanks again for your time tonight. We appreciate it. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.